Hello everyone. It's a great pleasure to welcome you all for today's session. This is ICPA clinical series episode number two. And it's a great pleasure to have Dr. Aslam Inamdar with us today. Dr. Aslam Inamdar calls himself an orofacial architect, a unique, uh, what you can say, title. Very few people have, I, I, I don't think I'd heard it before. I uh, saw it with uh, Aslam. I saw it with the name of Aslam Inamdar's name. I think, and it is very well deserved because the kind of things he's doing, using the platform of digital dentistry and creating such amazing solutions in aesthetic dentistry and rehabilitation, that orofacial architect is an amazing title to work with. And uh, Dr. Aslam Inamdar, as most of you know, is the flag bearer of digital dentistry in India. <laughs> He completed his mastership in clinical implantology from Stony Brook School of Medicine, New York. He's an implantologist, but his niche remains digital aesthetic dentistry and smile design and much more than that. In all this digital dentistry related uh, domain, he Aslam has extensively trained with uh, Christian Kochman, Florin Koffer, Master Polo Cano. Apart from being an expert in digital smile design, Dr. Aslam is the first diplomat from India in skin CAD CAM and also in natural restorations. He also happens to be the only dentist from Asia to pursue diploma in digital dentistry from JSI Institute, Spain. And in the last few years, Dr. Aslam has made multiple international visits to places such as USA, Romania, Spain, Brazil, South Korea to upgrade his knowledge in the fields of implant dentistry and digital dentistry. He has come up with some amazing concepts like natural restorations and copy paste dentistry. With his extensive knowledge and experience in digital dentistry, we thought that there are a lot of aspiring dentists, freshers, as well as seasoned senior dentists who are looking to transform their clinical practice into digital dentistry. So, but everybody has some questions, how to incorporate digital dentistry into clinical practice. There are so many tools so many gadgets how many equipment should we buy it looks like a never-ending process because people keep on investing in one after the other equipment and then we thought why not invite dr aslam inamdar who knows how to start how to keep it minimum in fact today he is going to tell us something new how to incorporate digital dentistry into clinical practice with minimum investment minimum investment in equipment in acquiring the digital skills as well as spending minimum time in knowing the digital technology so this is going to be a great session you are going to learn a lot of things and this is not going to be just a motivational session we know that a lot of people do digital dentistry courses and they all come back with a lot of motivation and a big list of things they need to buy but today, we will answer that one critical question, why people don't implement those things. People don't implement because they don't carry the systems and the process. So minimal investment, how to set up a system and how to develop process in your clinic. This is going to be the area on which Dr. Aslam will talk today. So let us begin. Aslam, the session is yours. Well, uh, that was a really long and wonderful introduction, Dr. Raju. Thank you very, very much. Um, I would like to thank all the listeners for joining us uh, post evening your clinical sessions. It's time to be with the family, but uh, those who are joining us, listening to us, that shows your commitment and passion towards dentistry. Uh, I'm really thankful for you. And the uh, last four or five days, I have been receiving a lot of questions regarding these sessions. And it's really an honor for me, you know, to be uh, talking about the subject that is a digital dentistry, the hottest topic today in dentistry. and. Uh, Talking about common challenges in digital dentistry is um, something really, really privileged for me. So thank you, Dr. Rajiv and ICPA for uh, providing me this opportunity and sharing my thoughts with you all. I really wish and uh, think and uh, hope that uh, this session, next 40, 45 minutes is really fruitful and uh, it is your time worth. So can I start my presentation, Dr. Rajiv? Uh, my screen is visible, right? Yes, yes, very much. Okay, so the common challenges in incorporating digital dentistry in practice. 
um, I have jotted down few questions which were most more common here uh, from uh, all, all the people who are going to listen to us and wanted to know more about digital dentistry. What are the technology I need to know about? Okay. Uh, want to know about softwares in digital dentistry? Great. How much to invest? How much investment required? And what is the rate of return on investment? Uh, sure, it is a, <laughs> a really a great question. Is digital dentistry viable in today's world? Uh, in today's world, to buy digital dentistry or is it viable? Okay. Practicing in rural areas and how to incorporate with constraints in treatment charges. So again, treatment charges is a myth which we'll talk about. How can I transform clinic into high quality digital clinic without investing money? Okay, great. That is, I think, one of the um, aim of this session today also because I want to help as many practitioners as possible uh, with, with these latest concepts of digital dentistry in their practices. And I don't want the learning curve to be very, very huge for most of you. I don't want most of you to invest unnecessarily in your practices unless you are really ready for that. And uh, how to incorporate digital dentistry into decade old practice or three decade old practice. I'm about to retire and, and there are a few more years left in my practice. So can I really do digital dentistry in my practice? Okay, a lot many questions and there are uh, I think uh, so Raju sir has a list of questions which we'll try and answer in the end of this session. I'm going to uh, speak for next 25, 30 minutes probably. And before I actually start talking about common challenges, let's understand the world of digital dentistry because a lot of people confuse digital dentistry, digital smile design. Is it the same thing? Digital smile design, everybody um, talks to me or calls me or messages me that digital smile design, karna hai, which software should I buy? Uh, um, what kind of scanner should I buy and uh, where to look for the laboratory which is going to support me. So let's understand the whole digital world of uh, dentistry because it's a big sea out there with a lot of gadgets, a lot of softwares, a lot of equipment. But most important part into all this is the know-how of all these things and application of this know-how in your clinical dentistry practice. So some things you may have to have in your practices most of the things you can really outsource or delegate and still get the best benefits of digital dentistry in your practice. So let's see uh, what a full 3D digital workflow is made up of. I like to categorize this workflow in three different categories. First is capture or the patient digitization where you would need certain tools and hardwares and some softwares to make the patient's digital clone or get the information of the patients digitally like photos, videos, scan, interval scans, or digitalized um, CBCT diacom. We'll cover up this in detail later, later. Second part I would like to categorize is processing or patient digitization, which is a CAD software. Various uh, computer added designing softwares. We'll talk about those. And last part is manufacturing or the CAM software and machining of all your prosthetic work required to complete your rehabilitations of your patients or whatever prosthetic work you need to do. So based on these three categories, the first category, which is capture or digitalization of the patient is most important for the clinics. And let's see what, what are the things which we require over here. One part, first part important is photography or videography. As soon as the patient is coming into practices, you should have his information in photos and videos. Then there is surface scanners, then there is volumetric scanners, photogrammetry and jaw movements. Now these are lot many instruments, equipments, and they're expensive. You do not need all these equipments initially in your practices just to become a digital and clinic. Even with a simple phone or a smartphone, your practice can be called as a digital dentistry practice in today's area, today's era, and I will talk about it a little later. So you may not have a DSLR cameras in your practice. Fine, until few years ago, if you wanted to make a foray into aesthetic dentistry and digital dentistry, you needed to have a DSLR camera in your practice. But with the advent of digitalization and with the smartphones in everybody's hand, even your chair side assistants do have a smartphones. Smartphone does not necessarily mean an Apple phone shown over here. Any smartphone which is able to give you good images is good enough for you to begin your practice as a digital dentist. Photography is writing with lights. So you should understand the science of light while taking pictures. Just by looking at the patient and clicking on the dental chair is not the kind of photography I'm talking about. 
learn the nuances of photography from photography masters we have friends like dr akash akinar who talks a lot about uh, documentation with mobile photography uh, we have um, a few other friends uh, like mayur dawda and others who talk about dslr photography so it depends whatever equipment you want to invest into or you don't want to invest anything mobile is good enough to begin your documentation but learn the art properly from the mentors just not clicking pictures right left and sending it to your laboratories and asking them to do wonders for you second part is surface scanners now surface scanners even if you do not have any interval scanner in your practices you take good impressions send it to the lab the lab have uh, laboratories most of the labs in india are digitalized already 10 to 12 years back and they have these laboratory scanners uh, with which uh, your impressions are turned into models and models are scanned so that information of patient's jaws and teeth can be converted into a digital informations of course most exciting for uh, part for the, the dentist today is you no know, having this a uh, great gun in our hands and once uh, i mean lot of us remain um, skeptical about investing into this kind of tool even if it is not there don't get dejected there will be a time when you will be purchasing or having this instrument in your practices it is not mandatory to have this tool in your practice today to have a digital dentistry workflow in your practices <clears throat> but as and when you are ready to purchase these equipments i am not going to go which scanner you should buy because i am not a spokesperson for any particular scanner my recommendation would be buy a scanner which will be um, economical to your pockets which will give you a good depth of scanning and uh, which will give you a good service and that could be any of these items from here on okay next surface scanner is a face scanner this is just for your information it is not mandatory again to have this in uh, surface scanner or face scanner you know practices unless you are really ready to invest lot of money in your practices this kind of scanner is also available with your iphone 10 and above versions it is a paid app so anybody can have it with the subscription but it is mandatory to have a interval scanner in your practice if you are really wanting to utilize these services otherwise it is not mandatory if you are taking good photos and videos that's enough to digitalize your patients another tool to capture the patient's information now here it is a volumetric scanner where the depth of soft tissue hard tissue is required we all know the ct scans now evolved for us as a cbct some of us would have it in our practices most of us will be dependent on the cbct center to capture this information and get a dicom file for us another tool which is there in the clinics most of the practices who are dealing with implants every day and full arches the taking a full arch implant imp impressions and getting that passivity in your prosthetic work is a task if if your practice is ready this kind of tool which is like two cameras and this there is a photogrammetric principles where the dots and the distance is calculated by this camera software and you get exact positioning of the scans uh, stls of the implants which you can send to the lab so no more impressions again not mandatory we, we can still have conventional impressions and convert it into a digital impression second part which i am talking about digitalization is digitalization softwares now these are the high end cad softwares most famous as serac pshep exocad nemotec to name a few the lot many softwares getting every day developed and all these softwares are also developing every now and then there are different different modules required as per your specialties you can purchase one of the modules required as per your specialties but the full full version of the software is basically made for the dental laboratories unless you want to incorporate dental laboratory in your practices these kind of softwares really turn out to be very expensive on your pockets and not just that there is a lot of learning curve required to master all this uh, cad designing on your own if you are a lover clinical clinical lover and clinician uh, this kind of uh, investments in your practices unless you have a team who is going to help you uh, to uh, deal with this kind of softwares it doesn't make a sense better to outsource Uh, the workflow on this kind of softwares third part is again if you only have cad softwares in house then only you can invest into milling machines and uh, there are various machine milling machines i don't need to talk about this this is not a topic i'm going to discuss wet milling dry milling uh, uh, glass grinding all sorts of materials and metals can be ground uh, can be milled and converted into processes we all know this but this is more of a laboratory some of us would want to invest into this kind of equipments as and when you are ready most common and a revolutionary thing in dentistry today i would consider is a 3d printing and uh, 3d printers are 
easily available between 20 to 30,000 rupees. A smallest, cheapest uh, any cubic photon can also be incorporated in a practice. And even if you do not have um, any kind of CAD software, any kind of interval scanner, but you have somebody who can help you with the designs and template-based dentistry, you can invest into this kind of uh, digital tool in your practice and still call your practice a complete digital practice with only a smartphone and a 3D printer in your practices. And basically you can get all the templates like I have shown here, implants, uh, implant guides, dentures, uh, 3D printed uh, temporaries, uh, motivational mockups and multiple other things can be printed on this and you can help your patients and your team to execute the right kind of treatment with this 3D printed tools. Now imagine there is a scenario, uh, I'm talking about dig uh, digital, I'm talking about dental clinic, not a digital clinic here. It is a dental clinic which do not have any kind of um, digital tools in your practices. Most of practices in India probably do not have all this. You have a smartphone, but you don't utilize it for taking pictures. So you are doing a conventional work where a patient is coming to your practice. Probably you are solving their uh, pain points and whenever there is a laboratory work required, you take up impressions, conventional impressions sent to the laboratories and laboratories does their part, give you the restorations, give you the veneers uh, or XYZ things. And you know, there is no proper way of communication between what exactly was your treatment plan and what exactly you want from the laboratories. So there is no system, there is no SOP in our workflow. And uh, there is a lot of the time, most of the time we have to repeat the processes or get it corrected or deliver the sub-standardized or sub-optimal processes. And uh, we keep blaming the technicians for this. And the technicians has never seen the patient. Sometimes he doesn't know whether the patient was male or female also because the dentist has not mentioned that in the notes or even if he has mentioned it, the notes are uh, written so shabbily that the technicians guys do not read it most of the time. And they just make the teeth and deliver it to you. So this is a kind of dentistry most of the time happening around us. With having interval scanners in our practices, probably we think that now my clinic has become digital clinic and uh, my most of the problems will be solved. I'll be giving digital dentistry to the patients. Of course, uh, it, this is a feel good factor for us as a owner, as a buyer, when you have interval scanners and practices. But even if, if you do not have a systems and policies and correct way of documentation in your practice, getting a 3D treatment plan done for those cases and presenting it in a well uh, structured manner, the problem remains the same. And that is where I think a missing link is there in most of our practices today. And what is this missing link is a basically an idea of 3D treatment planning center. Now, what is this 3D treatment planning center? Dr. Christian Koshman has this 3D planning center, uh, first 3D treatment planning center, which is uh, available in um, Spain. And most of us can buy these treatments online uh, where they do collect the patient's digitalized data, create uh, ideal 3D treatment plans and provide you the templates based out of that. That is one way uh, of doing digital dentistry, but for most of us, I think cost is going to be the barrier for this. So we need to develop more and more of these kind of centers in India as well. And this three treatment planning centers is basically not a one man job. It is uh, a team of people like a dentist, various specialties of the dentist, digital technicians, cam technicians, ceramists, uh, laboratory guys, all need to sit together and process on the first part of digitalized captured information from the patients and devise or form ideal treatments based on few concepts in dentistry which i'll talk about and then provide a reverse engineering and create templates and provide it to the clinics and then in the end that should go to the laboratory so that is the way a digital dentistry has to be done today and for this i believe uh, before my foray into uh, actual real digital dentistry with the CAD CAM and everything, I think I used to face these five major common challenges. I feel in my, I think they were my challenges and uh, being into dentistry for 20 years, I hope this could be your challenges as well. The first part I would like to say is it's a design part. Uh, we'll talk about this in detail. Second part is diagnosis and treatment planning. Third challenge is value creation, selling high end, life-changing dentistry to the patient is not really that easy because we feel that our patients are not ready to pay the money which we demand to them. Uh, somehow they excuse us by giving lame excuses that I do not have money, I'm traveling out next week, I'll come back and they do not want to come back and that is where we give them sub-standardized or sub-optimal treatment plans which 
they think they can get it done quickly and uh, get get out of the clinic fourth part is execution that is the treatment execution or the clinical dentistry itself is again a challenge for most of us because there is no standardization of the outputs of our surgical procedures or or, or our dental procedures and fifth part is having the right team a right motivated team all the time with you <clears throat> so coming back to the first part the design part why i'm saying design part because now a lot of people say smile design smile design is i think digital smile design the concept which was introduced by christian koshman thanks to him that uh, the real revolution in digital dentistry started with this idea of digital smile design concept now <clears throat> the concept was to get that uh, principles of smile design in a visual format and for that one can do that in on a keynote or a powerpoint which is a free software which takes little time to understand a lot of soft lot of youtube tutorials are also available out there you can learn from that um the softwares like krishan koshman software of dsd planning is available uh, our very own dr neeraj rohit's dts pro is also available or xyz softwares all these softwares are basically principles of smile design put together and then giving you the mathematics into the art and science of treatment planning so when the maths comes into the place it becomes more predictable but how to utilize this math clinically how to correlate this dsd principle dsd um, smile chassis clinically is again uh, one need to spend little time and learn about the nitty gritties about this and i think the best person to teach about this is dr rajiv verma who has been my mentor as well and he explains the nitty gritty is about dsd 2d planning and its clinical applications very well on his courses one can go and attend all those but coming back to after this is the most revolutionary part in the whole world uh, whole uh, game of dentistry from clinical side and from uh, cad cam side is the 3d natural restoration concept which is the basis of today's digital aesthetic dentistry and why i am saying so is uh, this concept thanks to master paulo cano who is uh, world's one of the best technician and dentist as well and uh, we all agree that sculpting teeth with our bare hands is subjected to our skills not everyone is god's gifted hands and our technicians are also not really really uh, i mean there could be barring few technicians who can deliver the great work but most of us do not have the access to those good technicians and every time those good technicians may not deliver the kind of results which we want because as human we have limitations the way we will sculpt the teeth uh, will always be short of what the natural tooth looks like the anatomies which are beyond tertiary anatomy the small grooves and shape of the tooth is basically more important in giving the aesthetic look or aesthetic outcome to the tooth so the concept was to copy the natural shapes and morphology as it is it existing in the nature and then incorporate it then in our workflows and create prosthetics which is monolithic which is a copy of the shapes and morphology and then just pure staining on them can create uh, veneers or full crowns or table tops whatever you call it whatever kind of restoration is that looks more authentic more natural with just a painting on those materials it could be glass ceramics it could be emax it could be zirconia or whatever it is but the shape is important and this can happen only in a 3d software with specialized trained technician on this concept not each and every technician can really work with this concept second part is uh, diagnosis most of and treatment planning now patient coming to a practice uh, it could go to a general dentist practice it could go to an orthodontist practice it could go to an implantologist practice and all of us have these boxes where we think from those boxes and only treat patients in that segment so our treatment diagnosis and treatment planning is based on our own experience and expertise but the patients problem could be multidisciplinary and we should be open minded to take opinions from a different team members and uh, give the best option to the treatments to the patients and for this uh, in a day to day practice it is very difficult uh, because probably you may have a lot many patients you may not have patients but we find it uh, the available resource is not easily available to us but today's digital world of dentistry we can have this information shared to the experts who are available out there on their uh, you know different digital forums and have these discussions create theory treatment plans from them and then come up with solutions to our patients third part is value creation and this is very very important and most important part in my opinion and a biggest challenge for most of us uh, 
if you really want to do a life changing dentistry for patients <clears throat> you really need to spend some time with them in your consultations after you get the digital informations you need to get this plans either do yourself or get it from a source which is ready to help you out with the 3d planning and you know most of the time 80% of the dentistry is an additive dentistry so there is a mock up which is required to be given in the patient's mouth uh, where he can have the feel of the look and the feel of how his persona is going to change after this dentistry so when you are doing this you need you should be taking good photos before good photos after the test done make a good collage make a big show good show out of this and get the patients emotionally involved into the whole process because a mind which is emotionally involved can this is where the process uh, you know uh, the patient coming to dentistry is with a need base for a need people have a limited budget but if the need is converted into a want then the budget and pain and duration is not a constraint so as a dentist unfortunately we are not taught about the science of selling treatment to our patients uh, but dentistry is a again jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai so if you are able to showcase that life changing dentistry is really going to be life changing for them if you are able to convey this message then only they will buy into the treatments and this is where you need to spend lot of time on understanding the nuances of early creation fourth part is execution and uh, as i mentioned execution most of us do not have god's gifted hand there is no standardization in our treatment procedures there is no standardization in the outcome of procedures which we perform so a template based copy paste dentistry which is based on ideal 3d treatment planning and then the reverse engineering concepts all these templates for uh, mock ups based on dsd 2d concepts and 3d natural selection concept ideal treatment ideal uh, mock ups uh, post preparation temporization mock ups injectable composite mock ups uh, crown lengthening guides teeth preparation guides implant uh, guides aligners final restorations all this is based with dsd 2d concepts and 3d uh, natural selection concept and everything is aligned to all these <clears throat> uh, first two concepts and you create templates out of this and these templates do help you even if you have average skill sets you can still have a standardized optimal outcome of these procedures and the fifth challenge is uh, team i mean everything cannot be done by one person you need to have a good people good team in you need to build this as a owner you need to come up with your own vision what exactly how far you want to go into the dentistry uh, uh, at what level what specialties you want to deliver treatment to your patients and uh, having the right team motivated team in your practice is our our responsibility uh, besides having your chair assistant receptionist um associate dentist interdisciplinary team members marketing guys you know it is a huge long list but a small clinic can also perform well if they know the jobs of each and every person and they know where to stop where to outsource things and get things done in partnership with others and then implement in the clinic so i think this know how is very important so in my opinion solution in incorporating digital dentistry in a daily practice there could be a digital clinic or i mean digital clinic with even even with a smartphone in your practice can be called as a digital clinic and what you have to do is collecting the patient's photos that is a digital information even if you do not have scanners you will take good impressions get it converted into an stl so again you have that intervals uh, uh, stl files with you photos are there if there is a surgical work required of course you will get a cbct done from an outsource center so that third part is there this three segments of information you can share with a 3d planning center of course in india now the trend will start where 3d treatment planning centers will be there they will be helping you to process all this information give you the design in the 2d and 3d format and they can also with their in house specialties can help you co diagnose the treatment they can help you provide i after you have drawn an initial treatment plan they can help you with the ideal treatment plans create those molds create those templates which probably you can ask them to deliver or you can have a small 3d printer in your practice and the stl file just needs to be taken on a mail and put into your printer and get the templates ready for your procedures and you know the execution with those templates is going to be easy as i mentioned value creation is the important segment with utilization of all this 3d treatment planning center uh, tools and uh, gadgets uh, which they will be using but you will get the final output 
but showcasing to the patient before actually you make the sale you give the final budget to the patient involvement of those patients with right kind of photography before and after shows is a uh, paramount importance and i think one of the most common and biggest challenge in my opinion today if even after knowing so many things and i have been with dr rajiv verma sir even if he is listening today he can also agree on this one part that for past 9 years he has been trying to you know uh, influence and impart people to go digital in corporate digital dentistry benefits in your practices most of us really get interest interested excited with the thought of it but uh, get confused where to start so probably i think we did not have an access to a lot of information before we did not have people who could help us with uh, correct workflows and with current times i'm sure and uh, right kind of three treatment planning centers in india and uh, otherwise also even if somebody wants to develop everything on their own and they are ready to uh, have their enterprising skill sets and investments and everything ready they can come up and help other dentists to provide the right kind of dentistry uh which is ideal and ethical and i think that is the only way to go forward so <clears throat> the change uh the the mindset is uh important over here change makes us uncomfortable and uh, being uncomfortable and then getting comfortable being uncomfortable and being getting uncomfortable there is a cycle you just cannot remain stagnant and i think you really want to impart a uh, good dentistry to the patient no matter what you will find your way and uh, today is i think it is a start of golden era of dentistry in india today and we all can get benefited uh, with this uh, digitalization in dentistry so you all can take steps depending on what is your capacity to invest but even if you do not want to invest much look out for the people who can have provide you help and support in 3d treatment planning i think 3d treatment planning is going to be the game changer in the whole of dentistry so these were few articles which uh, were there on dental tribune probably some of you can go through this and try and understand you can visit us on the following information if somebody wants to really get in touch with me and talk to me also uh, i am available on whatsapp uh, there is my website also somebody can i mean if you want to know more about this detailed concepts of digital dentistry you can visit and find out more on this and at at other length probably we can talk in detail at other venues uh, each and every topic itself is a you know it will definitely need a bigger discussions on this so i think uh, dr rajiv yes aslam uh, it was i think uh, very well, very well put across i am well on time if there are questions further on this i would definitely like to answer them yeah i think uh, you perfectly answered the concerns that the participants had most of the questions that we received from the participants were from younger dentists who keep seeing great cases being posted on uh, facebook and other social media platforms and mm. uh, they aspire to right. create similar results document them and publish across across the platforms but as i told in the beginning and as you explained very well they don't know where to start and they don't know where to end so right. you have answered both of them and you have given a very good balanced perspective based on the details you have given i i have made my own three points hmm. just tell me if i am uh, i if i'm summarizing them correctly yeah. dentists especially the freshers who aspire to produce great digital aesthetic dentistry results should understand that there are two different types of clinics digital dental clinic and 3d treatment planning center so everybody thinks that they need to open a 3d treatment planning center which requires huge amount of investment into gadgets and equipment and what you right. are telling in today's session what you told in today's session was you just stick to keeping a digital dental clinic where you have a great smartphone with good camera great camera that is good right. enough for excellent documentation right and remaining things because as you said it is not one person's job it requires multiple professionals it's a team job and that includes a laboratory also yes so a fresher will be better off if he just keeps his clinic as a digital dental clinic with camera and rest right. all things he can outsource 
where 3D planning, treatment planning is also done, execution stepwise is given, plus laboratory work is also done. Have I understood it correctly? Perfectly. That's the way forward. I think for most of us, not just fresher, but almost, I think 90% of the practitioners will get overworked and burdened with a lot of investment into the industry by buying so many gadgets, so many softwares, and then they would not be left with the time to actually deal with the patients. True, true, true. So, so what 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 the miss after buying so many gadgets is the system and the processes which can yeah. be outsourced and a great rehabilitation or restoration can be delivered to the patient which yes, is perfect. done by standardized standardized protocol where they don't have to even worry about the you know, learning curve yeah perfect because even if you have so many gadgets and softwares and everything in at your disposal you still need to have the know how of connecting all this to your clinical outcome true, true, and true. that part requires continuous vigorous learning and that is not one person job you need to have a lot of people in the team who are continuously learning on different aspects and coming up with great ideas and providing solutions and then these clinical practitioners can take benefit out of this so it becomes a different business model itself okay so suppose there is a newcomer and uh, his clinical practice is about three to five years old and he wants to transform his clinic he need yeah. not buy all the equipment and gadgets. All he has to do is convince his patients. Even for convincing, he can make use of the uh, trial run, the test drive. Okay. That will motivate the patient to say yes for the treatment. Then he yes. does excellent photography and sends yes. you all the details that you ask. And he gets ready-made solution from your side. And all he has to do is fit in the processes, again, document and publish. Yes. So in my opinion, your documentation has to be perfect. Yes. People are taking documentation for granted. They say that I'm not a lecturer. I'm not a presenter. I'm not going to go on the podium. So my photography is not mandatory in my practice. Forget about that. I mean, even if you don't want to do that, the best, the most important part today is patients, photos, videos is important for diagnosis, for documentation of before and after results and showcasing to your, your very own patients. Plus, it will also help you get clinically better hand because you will have the records of what you have been doing before and what you can be doing afterwards. So I think today if I am also sitting on this lecture today and uh, people are talking to me or even they are listening to me about digital dentistry concept. If somebody asks me what is my biggest investment in the practice today, I'm not going to answer this interval scammer. It is the one thing which I invested. I think that was in 2013 and that was my DSLR camera. And that time I did not... That time there were mobiles, but the phones were not so smart to capture good images. So we had to invest into a DSLR camera to take the photography to the next level. And I think whatever I'm known today is because of the work which is shared out there on social medias. And uh, if without photographs, without taking those documentation, that was not possible. Perfect. So documentation is critical and go on improving the quality of your documentation. So second point I understood was Digital dentistry is not digital smile design. Everybody thinks it's all digital smile design. But uh, what I understood was digital dentistry is much, much more than digital smile design. Far more encompassing as well as far more inclusive. Is it yeah. right? So there is Perfect. lot more to yeah. digital smile design. Yeah. So digital smile design concept was started by Coachman. And that was just the beginning of that uh, DSD smile frame on a POP uh, keynote or PowerPoint which is now evolved into a DSD software. But again, that is just the beginning and a note which will be connecting the clinical dentistry to the real CAD CAM dentistry. Of course, it is a big thing, but that is not the only thing. And what we are talking about is not just a digital smile design. Every patient coming to your practice is not a digital smile design case. Okay, I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm agree with that. But a 3D treatment planning, of each and every case coming to your case after the initial pain point is taken care of is the rightful thing for the patient because today if the technology exists it exists for the betterment of the people around it exists for the betterment of the society and i think it is their birthright to have the correct diagnosis and treatment plan given to them by the specialist or by the doctors for them and that is the biggest advantage of digital dentistry today i would say smile design is by default you know Function yes. and biology to be is to be integrated by the clinicians, but all these with the work, these workflows, if there is a requirement of uh, smile correction, that will come by default if you have a correct 3D treatment plan with you. 
all right so this is how i had to summarize from my side now i'll take some of the questions that our participants have sent on the google form uh, one of the questions is uh, highlight most important equipment for beginners i think you have already covered that very well <laughs> mobile <Please>. smart mobile <laughs> yeah smart <laughs> so here is an interesting question is it easy to incorporate digital dentistry a change mm -hmm. after 30 years of practice mm -hmm. why not i mean Definitely. Yeah, what I understand is, in fact, it is it will be much easier for him because he he already has so much of practice and he understands dentistry much better than freshers. Yeah. So of course. So at this, I'm, I'm sure at the 30 uh, years of practice, you have a sizable practice which could be multi-cell practice. You will have associate doctors working for you. You will have consultant doctors working for you. So most of the time, what you need to do is give them the direction to implement the digital dentistry workflows in your practices. If you can afford the scanner in your practice, great. That will be the fastest thing to implement digital dentistry because you will not be losing time in taking impression and sending to the planning center. Uh, now, again, I explained the photography and the rest of the things is not that difficult. Anybody can master. Even the chair side assistant uh, can master that. And uh, all this digital information can be shared with the planning centers or the laboratories which are actually giving the planning for you. And then execute the treatment. That should be the focus, I think, at the age of 30. At the age of 30, the practice, I think. Yeah. Next question is, is it worth to invest only in intraoral scanner or mm -hmm. we need the whole ecosystem? I think even you have, you have yeah, covered I, even this. Yeah, I, I, as I said, in, intraoral scanners is going to be, uh, I think, uh, like it's like an RVG. Radio, uh, RVG is like until six, like six, eight years back, people did still had a, a film-based uh, systems in their practices. But uh, today, I can't imagine a practice without an um, RVG in the practices. So yes. I think scanners will also be the next thing. In the next few years, most of us would like to have it. Uh, obviously, for its benefits of faster and precise and predictable results and communication with the lab. But again, it also adds value to your practices. Uh, patients do consider that if you have a digital tools in a practice, probably you are contemporary dentist with the modern uh, technique. So yeah, it works both ways. OK. So next few questions are all along the same line. How can I have a digital clinic without investing much? Can there be a cost effective way of starting a digital dentistry practice? Ah, here is one question uh, I think will be relevant for many practitioners. Practitioners mm -hmm. of rural areas where mm -hmm. there is no lab support and uh, there are charge constraints, mm -hmm. should they think about digital dentistry? And if yes, how can they practically incorporate it into their practice? Yeah, so the, I think the answer to most of these questions is going to be an independent 3d planning center uh, which will provide this kind of uh, customized services to the doctors anywhere in the world any part whether you are rural or metros and uh, a dentist needs to focus on capturing the right information getting the diagnosis and treatment plan correct and receiving all this information from these laboratories or design centers and you know getting those templates at your practice and then implement it. Now, cost. Now, there was a question somebody asked me that being yes. a rural area, uh, how about the costings? And I find most of my friends who are into uh, rural areas or non metro cities, actually, they are financially better settled than the practitioners in the cities. You know, we have to pay so much of rent over here. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is one of the major hurdles in the cities. Uh, in, in the in in the in the rural areas, probably a dentist gets his own place, his own um, uh, residences, everything in the next two or three years of the practices, whatever charges could be. That is irrespective. So the mathematics of uh, running a practice is much much easier at uh, rural areas, in my opinion. So whatever you charge, anyways, it is going to be a profitable venture for you because you are going to save a lot of your time and going to give a lot of predictability in your treatments. And patients are going to love you more. So probably you'll get more and more busy with this. But uh, with the digitalization, you will be saving a lot of time. So you can treat more patients. So whatever you do with the remaining time, whether you want to spend with the family or see more patients, it's up to you. True, true. Uh, next set of questions. Many of them are about uh, digital scanner, digital impressions. Uh, hi. Here, there is an interesting question. I want to know about skin concept. And skin how is it to DSD? Skin. skin concept. Okay, okay, okay. So as I mentioned, the skin concept uh, is skin is like something, the outer membrane. So it's, everyone has the skin. Uh, the, even the teeth have their skin. And that is the morphology. We call it primary, secondary, tertiary anatomy. The small grooves and cusps on the teeth. 
uh, which are responsible for you know the light passing capacity will change the, there will be shadows around the tooth and that exactly gives a different feel uh, for a natural tooth and artificial restoration will not have so much of anatomy in detail on them so the so there is a this difference in the visibility as soon as you see a restoration in somebody's mouth we know this is artificial and we know what is art, uh, what is what is a natural thing and this is what uh, the master paulo cano uh, who is uh, credited for this concept did not like about uh, the thing that we had to after learning dentistry then we have to learn so much practice so much to develop that kind of hand to develop to uh, carve the teeth and not everyone of us can do that so uh, <clears throat> the natural shapes as i mentioned is the motivation behind this here so if the nature's every tooth existing is beautiful in itself forget about the alignment but if you see the tooth single tooth in in total it's beautiful so if we can copy this shape and morphology as it is and create in our restorations from that um in a monolithic restoration so that cut back and layering what a technician does is not required at all so this monolithic restorations will be a replica of nature and that is what a today it is developed as a natural restoration concept the clinical term is more relevant is a natural restoration but master paulo gonna call this concept as a skin concept because it it signifies the outer layer of the surface of the tooth can yeah. you just just describe copy paste dentistry that is one word okay i think everybody is going to take home and i think that is something they should implement also because there is there cannot be anything more uh, i'll try no, and answer realistic. this question because i'll try and answer this question because you know um, before understanding this uh, i need to explain all these concepts in detail and i discuss all this at a different forums at a different platform but i'll try and answer so see a uh, 3d planning center the concept of this is there are two concepts one is dsd 2d concept which will give us the mathematics required in that case 3d natural restoration concept where the libraries of natural shapes exist in the 3d software so we can make our own libraries of walk-in patients who have a good teeth we scan them basically we segregate or extract their teeth virtually and create a libraries and use these libraries for our uh, motivational mockups ideal mockups virtual prep mockups virtual non prep mockups now it's difficult for me to explain you like this without showing any case or something like that but try and just as you uh, imagine all these mockups once we transform these mockups with the 3d printed things and uh, luxatem in the patient's mouth and patient likes it or whatever changes they want to do it in terms of alignment or different shapes we can you know try different shapes for the same patients so a different look can be generated out of it and once they approve of this now is the time to go back and reverse the dentistry now patient is approved the test patient is approved the look and how to reach out there there could be an orthodontic treatment required there could be crown lengthening required there could be implant required so all this will be done in the in the before you actually proceed with the final processing in case that is required on that thing and bridging the gap is actually a clinical dentistry once you come to the final restoration part you create a A room for your final restorations, cervically, incisally, and that all those clearances required, and the shape which was approved by the patient, we align all this uh, final file of preparation to the initial planning which is patient approved, and create a monolithic restoration out of this. In of course, in the three D software designs, and these designs will be milled or printed, whatever it is required in that final case, and we just the technician just has to finish polish and do the staining, and that is exactly what is copy paste dentistry is. because what you show in the beginning is delivered in the end because some of us still do a mockups which is hand based mockups and the technician skill is required in that so when you are doing test drives uh, the mockup looks different patient probably approves and when you do a final delivery of the processes that technician could be somebody else or the same technician has given a different shapes and different curves to the tooth so there is a difference in what was shown to the patient and what is delivered to the patient in digitalized process and reverse planning everything what is approved in the beginning is delivered in the end provided the interdisciplinary dentistry is followed by use of those templates which are created from those mockups so in short you say that there is a difference between similar and same yeah yeah earlier we used to try to become similar now there is no need to become similar you produce the same is you yes. yeah exactly exactly okay so there is one more question i think this is from a periodontist how can mm -hmm. we apply principles of uh, aesthetic dentistry and digital dentistry to primary and mixed dentitions 
if so, how can digital yeah. smile designing be useful in pediatric dentistry? Okay, so as we were discussing about digital dentistry and smile design, digital smile design, two different things, right? Digital smile design is probably a game of adults, I feel you, because the child is growing every now and then, up till 12 years, 14 years of age. So his jawline and his, his every dentition is not going to remain the same. So applying the principles of smile design, uh, in my opinion, it, it, it is not priority for those patients at the moment. Yeah, 3D treatment planning can be priority in some cases where there is a skeletal discrepancy or there is X, Y, Z things required from the pediatric dentistry point of view, which probably you would need a 3D planning. So there are two different things, smile design and 3D planning. Yes, 3D planning can be applied for the children depending on the deformity or depending on the treatment required. But smile design, digital smile design concept, I don't think it is that required in the children. I have not seen anybody following that or doing that. Okay. Uh, two more questions. How to create value for treatment rather than need? How to create value for treatment in patient rather than need? Hmm. So, yeah. So, I think it is... It is uh, lot many things are required there. It, it takes lot many reasons for the patient to say yes for the treatment. And a single negative thing in the clinic can um, turn out into a no. So the way your clinic is uh, presentable to the patient, the way uh, when the patient is outside, what he listens about you, what he hears about you. So your image is also going to count. When he enters into the practice, how well he is greeted, that is also going to be counted. When he is sitting in the, uh, in, in the reception, what he sees outside, what kind of work is showcased on your screens, on your, on your clinics, that is also going to be add uh, information about you. Once he is in your practice, on your chair, the way you communicate to the patient, the way you talk to the patient, the way you understand their problems is also going to count. After this, the way you document the case, the way you taking pictures, photos, videos is important. Getting a 3D plan, getting the mock-ups, getting again doing the mock-up and doing that uh, presentation before, after adding some light music into your presentation, showing under the big screen, creating that wow moment for the patient before actually you talk about the treatment cost and the final outcome of the treatment. Showcasing them, all this information is going to count. And once they get emotionally charged up about the final outcome of the treat, about the final outcome of the treatment, I think that is uh, really going to add value in terms of, in, in their minds when they're going to think, okay, doctor is charging this much. Why is he charging this much? There is a complete breakup ready for you now because we have shown him the dream. You have shown him the final outcome before. And they can relate to that and then only the things are going to count for you. So what you say is treatment plan presentation itself is a separate session. It's That's a separate session. session. That really needs to pay attention. Most of us count on things that uh, I am doing so much of clinical execution. I am done that course. I am done this course. And I know so much of clinical dentistry, my hand is good, my work is good, but all that is in your head. Patient doesn't know this. <laughs> so, so unless you, all the beginners you, who want to create value, start with treatment plan presentation, create a separate session for that, showcase yes. the entire session. And as Aslam said, show the end result to the patient. If the patient can visualize how he can, he's going to look once the treatment so is over. I think, I think if I have to give a, 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 a um, opinion over there or a suggestion to uh, youngsters over here, those who are into practice for three to five years and they have less number of patients in practice. I think your practice is the best practice to implement digital dentistry in your workflows. Because as you get senior and people who are more into uh, five years or 10 years into practice, they have multiple, they have more patients coming in. Probably they do not have enough time, you know, to implement this workflow, to give this kind of time to the patients. So you can really take over uh, the the benefit of this workflows. Don't uh, don't trip that you know I am not having enough patients uh, in my clinic. That one or two patients in a day can also be uh, turn out a huge for you if you decide to do a life changing dentistry for them. Stick to this. I I, I don't know why people in India want to do 30, 40 patients a day, but four patients a day and do a best of these things and give them the ideal treatment plan. There are a lot of patients who really want ideal treatment done for them. They really want dentists who can really take time out for them before making a sale. Make them understand the whole problem, whole benefits of different, different options which are going to be speak to them. 
and just stick to three or four patients. I think Great. we all will have enough number of patients for all of us. And whatever three lakh, four lakh dentists are in India, they are still not reaching more than seven percent of population in India. And there are so many people around us who need dental treatment, who need dental health. Even if we we have this, uh, you know, uh, I think block in our minds that. Um, people are not ready to spend money no as a dentist we are not able to tell them or give them uh, a value for our treatments and we need to really master this art great great uh, i think now we are coming to the last question this is more technical is mm. exocad a good dsd software to work with mm, dsd so uh, dsd is a, again a smile design concept and the cad software has multiple other things to do into it also. So it all will depend how much you learn into it and how well uh, you get trained on this and uh, relate to your clinical dentist. So of course it is a good software, but you need to know which modules you are working for, what is your specialty is, and you need to really spend some time learning on those things. The nitty gritties of the ExoCAD software from the company itself. You know, there are a lot of YouTube videos, there are company representatives which give you the training on handling of the 3D tools on those things. And then you need to see the clinical aspects of dentistry, how you can combine that thing for your practices. Great. That was a great session, Dr. Aslam Ramdar. I thank you so much. And I think the message is very clear. All the questions, people who had registered on Google form, people who asked here and people who had sent on uh, social media. I think all the questions have been very well answered. You need not jump from one gadget to another gadget. No, there is no need to buy all of them and then get stuck with so many of them in your clinic. Start with the digital dentist, the digital dental clinic. Start with good documentation. You can outsource everything from start till end. Yeah. And even right from the beginning of your practice, if you start producing great results, documenting them and promoting them, I think you can have a different growth curve for your clinical practice. So this video is going to be there on the Facebook page as well as YouTube channel of ICP Health Products Limited. You can always go back and watch it. There is a wealth of information contained in this video. And as Dr. Aslam said, it's a complex topic. You are most welcome to contact Dr. Aslam later also. And uh, for all of you who have watched this, in the next one or two days, we'll be sending you a summary of today's lecture, four or five points. I think each one of you is available on one or the other, one or the other uh, WhatsApp groups. If you are not there, follow Aslaminanda's page or ICPA Health Products page on Facebook. We are also there on Instagram and we'll be putting it on all the channels of ICPA Health Products Limited. So thank you for attending this session and thank you, Dr. Aslam, for sharing the wisdom and the experience you have accumulated over the years. So many experiments you have done and ventured into areas where nobody had been earlier. And uh, it has been a great, highly inspiring journey. And I wish you all the best. Hope you go on inspiring more and more people and revolutionize Indian dentistry, especially the digital dentistry part of Indian dentistry. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rajiv sir, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, ICPA. Thank you all the listeners for being part of this session. And I hope I have answered some of your questions, queries. Uh, I'll be available to you on my number or uh, Facebook. Anyways, you can contact me and uh, I should be able to find some time and help you out with your queries and wish you all the best. Thank you. See you soon somewhere, somewhere. And uh, it will be a great pleasure to interact with you guys whenever we meet. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night.